Lisa Turkhurst was a little girl when her father drove away in his car and never came back. That rejection was something she would deal with for many years. Rejection, it isn't just a complicated emotion. It's an utter devastation of what we thought was real and safe and secure. In her book, Uninvited, Lisa shares how she dealt with that devastation and offers advice on moving past these setbacks in our lives. Lisa joins us now, and we welcome you back to the show. It's great to have you Thank here. Thank you. It's always fun to be with you, Terry. This book is so powerful, and I want to talk about rejection, but I just first want to ask you, you've gone through a recent health issue that really was out of the blue and life-threatening. Are you yes. okay now? I am. You know, I woke up on a Monday morning at 5 a.m., had been feeling just fine, but then on this Monday morning, I was in excruciating pain. And what we didn't know then, but of course we now know, and it took them five days to figure it out, but the right side of my colon had ripped away from the abdominal wall, flipped over to the left side, wrapped around, um, cutting off the blood flow. Good and grief. by the time they figured out what was going on, they had to rush me into emergency surgery. So. I look like I've been bitten by a shark. It's like this big vertical uh, scar you need to right have here. Zipper marks tattooed <laughs> on that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can make up all kinds of fabulous <laughs> stories. But my daughter said, "But mom, you're not wearing bikinis yeah. right now, anyway. So nobody's yes, gonna see." Girl, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> okay. So, but I'm fine now. No lasting. Um, well, praise changes. God yeah. That. So huge praise. But I did just hear over the weekend, I posted just a little bit about it on social media. And there was a lady that came up to one of my staff members and said, my mom just went into the hospital. Mm. She showed the doctors your Instagram post and said, I think I have what she has. It wound up that she had exactly what I had. Good and grief. because the doctors could act quickly, it saved her life. So, you know, yeah. it's just amazing how God can take things that are really hard and awful and turn them around. You know, it's also a picture, I think, of how you can just be cruising along wonderfully in life and out of the blue, bam. What you write about in your book, though, is really that things can happen to you that you can kind of tuck away, hide, harbor, mm -hmm. and at just the right moment later in your life can do the same thing, kind of kick right. your feet out from under you. You really opened up about some painful childhood memories in the book. What made you decide to do that? Well, I decided that it was time for the Lord to really address the source of my pain. I think sometimes, just like when I was in the hospital and I had physical pain, I kept begging God, take away the pain, take away the pain. Mm -hmm. Had he taken away the pain, I would have gone home and died yeah. because something was really, really wrong that needed to be fixed more than numbing the pain. Mm -hmm. Something inside of me needed to be fixed. And so the pain because I had pain, it forced me to stay in the hospital. It forced me to allow the doctors to cut me open, fix me, and now I can continue living. Emotional pain is very similar to that. You know, sometimes we beg God, take away these feelings that I'm having, but the feelings are indicators that there's something going on. Yeah. And I was having emotional pain, but I just kept, I, I just kept thinking if I'm busy enough, if I'm, if I'm successful enough, or it'll, it'll just fix itself. Well, it's but not fun to go in. No. And, evaluate it's not fun that. my staff was like let's don't write another book like this one because <laughs> this has been painful to fa but here's the great yeah. side on the other side of this this is what i've learned a deep profound sense of god's love and even more important than understanding god's love i finally understand that god's love is not based on me Mm -hmm. It's simply placed on me. And That's it's so from, hard to it accept. Is. Oh it my is. goodness. Everything else in life is performance. It is. You know, to just, ex just receive that God loves us, just loves us. We don't have to do anything. I mean, that's... That's hard for us to accept, don't you think? It is, but I, I believe that while it's not based on us, God's love is placed on us and it's the place from which we should live. Yeah. Like it's not the success of our life or the lack or the abundance of our life, but it's that profound knowing God mm -hmm. loves me. And then I can walk into every day carrying that sense yeah. of I am loved. Well, and then when you come to the other side of that, it's a little bit about like the report that the woman took to her doctor. Now you get to take that brokenness made whole and turn around and pass the truth of that off to other people. And it's it's like a 
multiplying scenario where people just keep being redeemed and set free. Well, that's my hope, really, because while the book Uninvited is about rejection, that's just the starting place. Where I really want to get people to is from that can spring this amazing revelation of God. I've learned that from desperation, oftentimes we'll get our greatest revelations. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me when I was writing Uninvited. Terry, I wrote Uninvited because I thought, okay, I'm gonna deal with these rejections, not really dealing with any rejections in my current life, but it's gonna be just fine. But I'm telling you, God, through the writing and editing of this book, ministered to me so deeply. It gave me a different sense of appreciation for this message because I realized I needed it most of all. This all started with your dad walking away when you were a child. And you know, lots of times when something happens in our childhood, we we go through many years and we come to a place where we think I've dealt with that. Right. Tell me about the Garden of Gethsemane. Many yeah. years later, here you are in Israel and in that garden of all places, what, what happened? Well, I had read about the Garden of Gethsemane in the Bible and I pictured it very differently than what it actually looked like. It literally is just a series of olive trees. Yeah. And so as I was standing there, in the Garden of Gethsemane, thinking about this is where Jesus was in his moment, where the Bible says, describes Jesus in that moment of being in the garden, that, that when he was praying, realizing I'm about to go to the cross and fulfill the destiny that God set forth for me. I thought to myself, Jesus was there when God created this scene. And so, and we know that from John chapter one. So if Jesus was there, why the olive tree? So mm -hmm. I did a little research, like why would Jesus pick the olive tree to be the thing that he would sit in the shade of when he was desperate? My soul is overwhelmed to the point of sorrowful death is what Jesus was saying. Why the olive tree? Well, I did a little research and there's fascinating facts about the olive tree. The olive tree, it takes both the east winds and the west winds blowing on the olive tree mm -hmm. for it to produce fruit. The harsh winds of the east represent, I think in our life, the devastating times, the, the hard times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's the refreshing winds of the west, but that tree will not produce fruit if it only has the refreshing winds. It takes the hard times and good times in order to produce fruit. Yeah. And I believe we are the same way. And as I sat there, and there were other truths about the olive tree that I learned, I was so profoundly impacted realizing that I'm standing on this ground where Jesus stood in this same scene. And it was in that moment, I wanted my tears to become part of that ground yeah. because I had to just let the realities envelop yeah. me. And it was in that moment I realized I'm not the child of a broken parent. I'm a child of the almighty God. Mm -hmm. The yes, the yes to the healing, mm -hmm. the yes to the cross is what took place in Gethsemane. Absolutely. The yes to your healing is is part of what happened in you. Boy, it's a powerful book. We have just skimmed the surface. It's like all of Lisa's books. It's a must read. It's called Uninvited and it's available wherever books are sold. Thank you so much oh, for being with us thank today. Thank you, Terry. Just a tip of something you want to get a hold of. Thank Bless you. you.